The boots are on the ground. Welcome, everyone, from Copenhagen, Denmark. This is Let's Run.com's Weldon Johnson, joined by Jonathan Galt. Jonathan. In person, a rare in person podcast opportunity. Robert's back home in Maryland, but we've got two people at Let's Run from Let's Run at World Cross Country so far, which is two more than a lot of countries uh, ascending at all, uh, including the Netherlands, which is only a stone's throw away. I'm excited to be here, Weldon. I think this is going to be a great week. It's one of the greatest weeks in the running world for us. The world's greatest foot race. You know, you can get technical and argue it's not, but the World Cross Country Championships, Saturday from our host, Denmark. Men's race, 9, p- 9 a.m. Eastern. You got no reason not to watch it. And joining us stateside, one of the most controversial men in track and field, but the hero this week, the hero to everyone throughout the world. Vindicated. Vindicated. Robert Johnson, how are you feeling right now? Wow. A career highlight, folks. I have peaked at age 45. One of the greatest days, weeks of my life, folks, the brainchild behind Kelsey Bruce competing at the World Cross Country Championships. Is that what you're referring to, folks? Is that why there's cheers for me? Yes. Kelsey Bruce mania has taken over the international running world. In case you guys have been in a dark cave for the last couple of days, let's run.com. Excuse me. I should not identify myself as co-founder. I'm the head coach of the Let's Run.com team at the World Cross Country Championships. We have a runner in the race, 231 marathoner, Kelsey Bruce. Houston Marathon this year, sixth place, top American. Very good marathoner, unsponsored. We put out a challenge. Who's got the cojones that are big enough? That's a phrase to run this race. And got a few interesting entries. And Kelsey Bruce took it up. And the response has been amazing throughout the world. Emails, tweets. You guys have seen them. It's really cool. People have rallied behind her and she's super excited. So we're going to have a special podcast this week with her. We're going to have a lot of coverage from Denmark. Today might be a little shorter than our weekly podcast, but we're going to come back tomorrow with another podcast and maybe one Friday as well. So great stuff all around. Yeah, I think, well, then maybe it's worth reading off. We've got a few emails or quotes from people, comments about their thoughts on Kelsey getting to run this race on Saturday against the best in the world. If you're not totally aware of this, there is a way for athletes to sign up to compete in the, against the senior men and women in the championship race at World Cross Country this weekend. They don't count on the team scoring, but they get to start at the same time. They get access to the elite tent, all that sort of stuff. We've got a few comments here if you want to read them off, well then. Yeah, Stephen K. Sydney Kelsey Bruce, the World Cross Country Championships, has to be one of the coolest things I've ever seen someone do for someone else. Just freaking awesome. DJMI00. As a sometimes poster, an everyday reader, and random LRC t-shirt wearer. I just wanted to congratulate you both on sending someone to World XC. Very cool. Sarah Hall, wife of Ryan Hall on Twitter. Love it. Good stuff. Let's run. Gabriel R., other people, lots of emails. I didn't even know you guys had put up the article yet, and I was getting emails in the inbox, which is amazing, because we didn't say email us and tell us how great we are, but it's really cool. People are behind this. And our very own Malmo, the crankety old moderator, one of the moderators of Let's Run, wrote us as well. And he never emails us unless he's complaining about something. Love you, Malmo. Yes, Malmo did admit to using steroids at one point for all you haters out there. Malmo said, this is the kind of thing that makes our sport good. Well done, guys. It's really cool that the IWF is letting people run the race. And Kelsey gets to go against the best of the world, see how she's going to do. She couldn't even get into the Stanford 10K this week. And yet she's the 231 marathoner. She was the number four division two nationals in cross country. And she's super excited, super pumped. Our motto is where your dreams become reality. And I think at times we get away from that. And there's a lot of so much positivity in Let's Run. But I think in the world in general, people can focus on the negative. And Rojo, our number one troll. That's what you're called by some people. Arguably, arguably. Well done. At first, I was going to be a little bit critical for you doing this at the last second. Plane tickets are a little bit more expensive. Not lining up a suite of sponsors. This is coming out of half of my own pocket, but it's been great. It's been tremendous. So great job, Rojo. Thank you. On Sunday morning, I actually tried to call you repeatedly. You weren't answering your phone. 
it was just bothered me. To me, World Cross is my favorite race in the world. I started going whenever it was in Amman, Jordan. Was that 2008 or 2009? Skipped out of my Cornell coaching duties. I was so excited about German Fernandez. German, I love you. This, I wanted to see him take on the world's best. And it was bothering me that some people had turned down spots on this team. I'm like, why wouldn't people want to go? I really tried to sort of goad Edward Chedrick into going a few week, a few months ago. That didn't work. And I'm like, why wouldn't Drew Hunter want to go? He wanted to make the team. He tried out for the team. Why not just go and pay your own way? But you didn't answer Weldon, so I said, screw it. I'm just going to put it up. It's kind of last minute. To be honest, I put it up last minute thinking nobody would possibly respond that late. Just kidding. But I was like, maybe it's too late, but maybe somebody will want to go. And then we got some nice responses. We had an 819 steeplechaser that wanted to go. But the moment I read Kelsey's email, it, it just hit me. First of all, from 248 to 231 in less than three years is amazing. And then the fact that someone like that, I mean, she's got an outside shot at the Olympics in the marathon. There aren't that many women in U.S. history. I don't know how many, like probably less than 20 for sure, right? That have broken 230 in the marathon. She's only two minutes away from that. I was like, how could she not get in the Stanford 10K? This woman is dedicating her life to running. This is absurd. So I'm like, she's definitely going. So, and then you get more. The story is fantastic. I mean, she's, I joked on the message board. She's from Texas, like Weldon I. She has Dallas ties. Her coach, Jacob Phillips at Dallas Baptist University, he loves John Kellogg. We love John Kellogg. So check, check, check. She checks all the boxes of Let's Run. You know, we've really focused over the years on the baby nationals and, and our women's coverage. And, and, and this, this, this proves it. Well, nice baby nationals reference, Robert. I think we should read her email. Robert, can you pull up her email that she sent us? It's just pretty cool. And guys, we have a new announcement. Yes, we have turned down an 819 steepler to run this race. But it looks like we may have a men's entrant in the World Cross Country Championships as well. So, John, we're almost, we're, we almost have a team. You and I may have to run, player coach as well, and we could have a team score. Yeah, we could beat Germany. We could beat Poland. We could beat Norway. I mean, we could beat a lot of countries, uh, these championships. And actually, before we go any further, well, then, uh, something I haven't done yet, but I need to. This is my first Carlsberg in Denmark. Cracking it open. Going to say cheers uh, while we're recording the podcast here. There we go. Now, how expensive are things over there? How much is a is a beer? Don't they have a lot of taxes over there? This beer was like fifty. We got a six pack for I, what was it? Six dollars? Well done, of Carlsberg. Yeah, the beers are about a dollar piece. Denmark's a fascinating country. Maybe we should talk about some of that. It's known for being very expensive for food. Like if you eat out, it's super expensive. The grocery stores are way cheaper than New York City, but food can be expensive when you eat out. I think the minimum wage is about nineteen dollars an hour here. But it's much more egalitarian. It's a beautiful country. Carlsberg, John, though, is not the official beer of the World Cross Country Championships. We need to give credit where it's due. Correct. And this will be the official beer of our podcast and the official beer of our stay here. They're not even paying for this this we're, ad here. We're they're just, not even paying, but the sponsor, we're supporting them for supporting World Cross, which is which is Mikkeler. Mikkeler, and you see them around. It's pretty cool. They're the sponsor of cross country. They're a Danish beer. And they were founded by... Yeah, they were founded by a guy. He used to... He actually was a Danish... Uh, he was an elite runner. He ran at World Cross back in the 90s. Uh, his name is... I don't... I'm sorry if I botched the pronunciation here uh, for any Danes. But his name is Mikkel Borg Biegso. They have Mikkel Track Clubs. There's a big thing about running is a big part of their identity. And, you know, essentially they like to get people together, run, do some races, and then, you know, meet at the pub afterwards for a beer. I think it's a great thing. I'd love to learn more about it. I think they, they have this awesome beer tent. We've seen the pictures coming up uh, on the course today and we'll get a chance to check it out on Thursday. It looks like it's going to be terrific. They'll be serving beer there during the race. So I think really, it's just really cool what they're doing. They wanted to do something for an event for this sort of big event and actually jacob larson who's the sort of mastermind behind this whole championships he's the director of the danish athletic federation he told me that the sponsorship came about because he was out on a run jacob runs a lot as well he's a runner so he's one of us and he was listening to a podcast uh, and he was listening to mikhail borg so the mikola co-founder talking about how he wanted to get involved with some sort of big event and jacob Stopped right there on his run and I think called him up on his phone and tried to get the wheels in motion. And now for World Cross Country, Mikkel is the title sponsor and they're going to make the event. I think I think it's definitely going to have a positive impact on the event. Little known fact, he also ran at Kansas State. We got an email. I think it was from, I may be wrong, Joe Moore, who won the Shamrock Shuffle. But somebody who ran at Kansas State wanted to also go to Worlds and said one of their selling points was, hey, I'm from the school that produced the official beer of the World Cross Country Championship. So it's a small world out there. And you guys wanted Kelsey's email. I'm trying to find it. And here it is. 
Hello, hey, let's run. My name is Kelsey Bruce, and I saw your post regarding the sponsorship of an individual to World XCs. I want to put my name in the ring. I've attached my running resume. I placed in the top 10 in USA Road Championships multiple times and was the top five finisher in college at the D2 XC Nationals. I'm not a Chilimo or a Drew Hunter, but a hunter of some good competition. We loved it because in my post on the message board, I said, look, if you're Paul Chilimo or Drew Hunter, I'll definitely send you. If you're somebody I've never heard of, I'll contemplate it. And the Hunter reference, fantastic. It's really exciting. And I do, we do, folks. I can confirm what Weldon said is correct. I will be sending a man to the championships. I have found someone extremely economical, much cheaper than flying them from Dallas, Texas. This person has recently moved to L.A. They have given up their whole life to run. They were like a 15, 20, 5,000 runner for most of their college career. Um, their sixth year of college, I think they ran, finally broke the 15 minute barrier. Now they're down under 14, and he's still dreaming big. I'm not going to reveal his name, folks. Go to let'srun.com to find that out. But, um, well, don't worry. It's not going to break the budget. He's flying from London. This guy is amazing. He's living on like $18 an hour in London. He has found flights from London to there for a very, very cheap price. So don't worry, Weldon. He also has agreed to sleep in your Airbnb. Uh, folks, don't worry. We're a Christian organization. We have, we have gotten Kelsey. We've gotten Kelsey her own hotel room. So don't worry. There's nothing untoward there. Thank you, Robert, for that. Very professional. Let's run. We need to pause for a second. Chris Lukasik, if you're out there, Airbnb, hit us up. You could sponsor this thing. All right. First question of the day. John, do you know who Chris Lukasik is? Yeah, he was a US, successful U.S. 1,500-meter runner of the 2000s. Anything else? And he was like employee 11 at Airbnb or something like that. And But didn't he like cut his track career short, basically, to go all in on Airbnb? Isn't that, is that right? Or am I making that up? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he Chris was pretty smart. He made a world team in college out of Georgetown. Yeah, and got a big contract because he beat Alan Webb. And he, that's when Alan Webb was huge. People were afraid that... Webb was hit or miss, but in Webb's peak, he beats him. Smartly turns pro, runs a few years, and then definitely had many years left and just said, that's kind of it. And I think he sort of realized, like, I'm not going to be a El Garouche or Alan Webb even. Well, you know? there's only one El Garouche. He's not going to be the greatest 1,500 meter. Yeah, I'm not going to be time. a 330 yeah. guy, and I've already made the Olympics, so I love this, you know. So he's got his degree from Georgetown, and he had this opportunity at he Airbnb. He made the Olympic team? He made a world team for sure. Actually, yes, yeah, so we didn't make Olympics, but if I said Olympics, I mean Worlds, I think. But hey, I remember thinking, "What an idiot! You're only young once. You're only young once." But with that type of money in my bank account, you're only rich once too. So, <laughs> yeah, smart call, smart call, Chris. Well, for the 2004 Olympic trials, so he's one spot away from making it. Yeah, so I think that oh, what year was that? 2004, and then 10th in 2008. Yeah, so after eight, it was right after eight. He's like, "Am I going to go another four years? No, let's let's move on." Y'all were talking about imitating some of these other runners, and I'm not going to mention names. All I'm going to say is drug testing is a lot more difficult now than it used to be. So, of course, he's not going to be one of those runners. Yeah, I understand where you're going. Also, speaking of emails, we've received an e- – we have listeners everywhere. Uh, I got an email from a listener in Denmark. He said they almost crashed their car listening to our podcast this week. I received an email from Australia. They're very excited. Bothurst, Australia, I believe. Site of World Cross Country 2021. And they've seen how excited we are about the course in Aarhus. They have a beer tent. You got to read the article and let's run. This course is going to be amazing. We're going to have video previews. We're going to be, I guess someone has to come up with a pre-race workout tomorrow for Kelsey. We're very <laughs> probably demanding workout. I mean, I saw Alberto. Well, put- we got to learn from Alberto's pre-race session with Kajelcha before Milrose. Don't go too hard the day before the race. That's the only workout I've seen two days before major championship. It was pretty hard. So I figured I should imitate Alberto. Well, do you guys have the Testo boost with you? It might help her recover in time for the race. Testo no, boost. actually, we're still looking for someone. If there's someone in the U.S. who has a book that they don't mind hollowing out and sending over to the, you know, to Europe, we'll, you know, we'll take suggestions on that. This is our weekly Alberto segment of the podcast. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you. It didn't take us long. Only um, 15 minutes. Can Please. Nike sponsor an Alberto portion of the podcast? I was thinking about this today. I'm going to start a thread on this matter. Has Alberto Salazar, he's a former silver medalist at the World Championship, in cross country, but has the Nike Oregon project runner ever run the world cross country championships under Alberto? The race seems to be not Alberto certified. I can't think of anyone that's run it. Maybe a woman ran it way back. He has to have had some, but Sifan Hassan was supposed to run this year and pulled out this. She had a U.S. cross this year. She didn't make the team. 
Uh, I'm trying to think. I, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of there a has- woman. I can't think of a woman doing it because he hasn't had that many long distance women. And I'm trying to think of long distance men. Did Cam Levins ever run World Cross when he was with Alberto? Oh, wow. Interesting. So we can say for the record, let's run.com with one more a- athlete than the Nike Oregon project in the team. At the airport today, we were waiting for the luggage, and Scott Simmons was there. And usually, you know, Scott is very friendly with the press. And today, he just blew us off. He wouldn't even talk to us. We're rival coaches now. This is, you know, separation of church and state is vastly eroding. Let's run. It's putting us in a very difficult situation. But we're professionals. We'll coach. We'll be journalists. And then maybe I'll race the – what the crown prince of Denmark and Seb Co are also running in a separate race. Oh, Seb Co scalp up for grabs there. So I might have to throw myself in that race. Can someone find out which race they're in? This is going to be a great weekend. I think they're on the four by two K relay, right? Yeah, there's a four oh, by two K. There's an relay. open two K race as well. Are y'all going to do the course preview? You know, because the, the so the elite pro race is like a two K loop repeated, right, John? Five times, but they have like a twelve K race, I think, for amateurs. And it's, you, like, you go back into the woods, like it's a legitimate, like it's one loop, I think, or several. I don't, it's pretty interesting. If this course ends up being as cool as I think it's going to be, maybe my expectations are too high. It's like a movie, and you hear it's so good. Just make this the permanent home. I mean, the the guy in Barthurst or wherever it is in Australia. Are they building a museum? I mean, we need a museum with a roof on it that they can run on for, for two years from now. Like, that should be the hallmark of, of the World Cross bidding. Like in Terre Haute, we need to tear down the course and put a museum underneath the course so that people can run on top of it. I can't wait. And with a baby, I have to get up early. By the way, guys, I might have to leave this podcast early. The reason why I'm not, folks, I'm famous for the World Cross, and I'm always there. I went to Guiyang, China. It was amazing. I like to say I like to go to events that no other media members go to because then you get exclusives. Everything you do is an exclusive. But I really do think cross country is what the sport's all about. But um, I'm supposed to be. Um, I've sent the, the the nanny has gone on a two week vacation, so it was a mistake by me to not look at the dates. And also this afternoon, I'm on duty after five, and it's five nineteen because we started late. And I can see Baby Johnson here. I'm not going to reveal his name, so you can't Google him or ever right on his Facebook or Instagram page. He's stirring in his crib. I have a camera in there. Don't worry, folks. And Robert, it's unfortunate you won't be here, but I have a correction. What you said earlier, you said the first cross-country championships you went to were in Amman, Jordan in 2009. That is false. Fake news. One of your favorite words. You went to the world championships in Dublin in 2002. You saw Paula Radcliffe win that one, I believe. And I believe also, did you go in 2003 in Lausanne, Switzerland? Because I was at both of those. I did not go to Lausanne, Switzerland. I've never been to Switzerland. So 2002 was correct. We haven't really been providing much analysis. We've just been sort of on a cloud nine here. I think you guys are jet lagged. I'm excited about a thread that is four pages long and only has one negative post on it about Kelsey Bruce. So I'm, let's provide the analysis. You know, I like to do yes or no. My Kelsey Bruce question, my goal for her I hope she's not listening because I want to put pressure on her. I would love for her to beat an American on the team. That's a good goal, right? Yes or no, will she beat a Team USA member? Jonathan. Uh, I mean, as as cool as it would be to see, uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, the women who the women who qualify for the U.S. team are all really good runners. I mean, you've got three real, three studs from the Bauman Track Club in uh, Carissa Schweizer, who's an NCAA D1 cross-country champion. You've got... Courtney Frerichs, American record holder in the steeplechase and uh, silver medalist at Worlds. You've got Marielle Hall, who's been in the best form of all of them this year, uh, who was third at USA Cross, 2016 Olympian. And then Sarah Pagano, Stephanie Bruce, and uh, Anne-Marie Blaney from uh, – she's a Central Florida alum now with Hanson's Brooks. I mean, those women, they all had to finish uh, highly at the USA Cross Country Championships, you know, in the top 10. It's just – that's hard to do. I don't think all of them could run a 231 marathon, though. I mean, 231 is pretty good. Yeah, but this, I is, agree. A, this is a 10K cross-country course. Well, then, it's not a marathon. I, th- I think no. my heart wants to say yes, but my brain says no. I think it's a stretch goal to beat one of the Americans. But Kelsey, she's tough, Texan tough. This is great, Robert. You know I grew up in Dallas. She lives in Dallas now. She grew up on a ranch. She should be good at cross-country. We can teach her to be good at cross-country. Like, I thought I was good in, te- in cross-country. Growing up in like Dallas on like pancake flat courses with nice grass. No, no, no. That is not cross country. When I went to real cross country, I was terrible. Kelsey, meanwhile, thought she wasn't that good at cross country, but she grew up 
running the mile on her dad's ranch, her parents' ranch. This should make her tough. This course could be hers. You know, what if one of these girls can't go up the hill or the beer tent? She, you know, this we will coach her. The mental pressure, the beer tent. Yeah, but, but running a mile, folks. I don't know if they own the ranch, but they worked at the ranch, I think. But she was running. She would beg her father to let her out of the car when he entered the gate, and she'd run to the house. And she just she, they thought it was only like a half mile. And they recently went back to visit the ranch, and it was a mile run starting. And she said she moved out of there before she was four, so two or three years age. She was doing that a lot. So yeah, the other Americans. I mean, Kelsey's run thirty three fifty for ten thousand meters. The other Americans have all run thirty two thirty one or faster. So yeah, it would be a stretch if it was, was a half marathon. I would bet my life that she beats one of them. Bet your life that confident. Wow. If there's a DNF that counts, that's a scalp. A DNF, she beats one of them. She's on the upswing. What was she hoping to run at Stanford? I should ask the coach, right? He said she's in very good shape. And Shout out to our coach, Jacob Phillips, longtime Let's Run guy. He's the one who actually uh, sent this opportunity, put it in front of Kelsey. So without him, this wouldn't happen. So uh, thanks, Jacob. Head coach, Dallas Baptist. Can we shout out to – seriously, I was talking to Jacob last night on the phone, catching up. When he got the job, he's been there 14 years. So I must have only been at Cornell for a few years, and he called me and wanted to know like, what's it like to coach, coach at college and stuff like that. When I talked to him last night, you know, it was amazing. First of all, Kelsey runs like 100 miles a week like consistently. Very few people do that in the world. Like, people may get to 100, but not they, run, they don't run it consistently. But a shout-out to Dallas Baptist and all these guys. I mean, the, the men's program there is non-scholarship. He's like, oh, we have lots of guys that run 100 miles a week. So Steve Soprano, employee 1.1 at Cornell, he coached as an assistant coach at D3. He's like, yeah, I always thought like I was good at running because I ran a lot. Then I realized even on the D3 level, there's guys that are running 100 miles a week. So – a lot of people want to be good, and this is getting us back to our roots about the dream, the desire. And But just to see someone come down from 248, I mean, Kelsey told me that she was scared of long distances. She ran the steeplechase in, in, for most of college. But then within a few weeks of getting fourth at the NCAA D2 Nationals in 2015, Coach Phillips got her, run, got her to run a half marathon. She qualified for the trials, and she ran a marathon within three months of college graduation, which I think is fantastic. Like, why waste your time on the track? She still runs track. She still wants to improve her speed. But um, it's really, a, you know, a, a great story. Um, so still very excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I think we should maybe look ahead. You want to look at some of the pro races here, Weldon? Thank you, you, John. We're actually going to be able to, to talk to Kelsey the next two days. And yeah. we're actually on the podcast. We said this was going to be short. We're going to be jet lagged. You, you guys may not believe, but we actually edit this thing. This will be lightly edited today and just posted. But let's move on. We got to start with with the king, the king, the, the, the one that wrote the counts. When Weldon went to Mombasa, Kenya, sorry, folks, and maybe things have changed. How many years ago was that, Weldon? Twelve years. Wow. Wow. Yeah, 12, 2007. So twelve years. The world's progressed a lot. America, we have gay marriage. We have transgender um, people competing in sports and stuff like that. Twelve years ago, when Weldon was at World Cross in Mombasa, Kenya. It was clear to him, it was made clear to him that the thing that they cared most about was who won the senior men's individual title. That was way more significant than the team titles, anything else, because they viewed the senior men's team title. It's somewhat a macho, sexist world in Kenya, at least 12 years ago. And that was the king. That was the lion, the the king of the jungle, the king of the not jungle. Right. What's the words? That's the king of the hill, king of the jungle. I think king of the jungle. I mean, I don't want to. I don't think it's inappropriate to say that. I think that's a fair title. It was hotter than hell. People were climbing over fences, barbed wire fences, knocking down wire wire fences, hanging on cliffs, climbing trees, hanging out of trees to watch it. It was like mayhem to see this event. And it was like 90 degrees and humid. Were there like 30 or 40,000 people there, right? 50,000? Yes. At least 10 or I mean, it was just packed full of people. And that in that race, Kenisa Bekele like essentially passed out in the heat, and it was just war and craziness. God, it's nuts. I was watching the video earlier this week, and it's Bekele's leading going into the final 2K lap, and you think, okay, he's won five straight at this point, so you think for sure this guy's going to win. And Zosne Tedesse is trailing him by a little bit, and the commentators are talking. It's Stuart Story and Paul Turgot are doing the commentary. And it, it, you need to watch this clip. It's fantastic. It's Paul Turgot is basically freaking out and can't believe like what he's seeing. And he's saying, oh, my God, he's, something's wrong. Something is wrong. And he's just yelling, something's wrong. And Bekele starts looking terrible. He slows down. Tedesse runs with him for a little bit. 
And then Bekele just gets dropped hard. And then he ends up, he might have still been, I don't know if he was in second or third place at the time. I mean, he was pretty far up and he just ducks under one of the little um, banners alongside the course and just steps off the course and he's done. And it, it was just shocking to see this invincible man who had won five straight world cross titles he just drops out because he couldn't i mean it was brutal conditions but it's a crazy crazy video in a race. and there was like a roar that went up in the crowd when he dropped out just like, ah. and you know kenya didn't the kenyan men won the race with 29 points second morocco with 150 six men score 29 points and they scored six guys and people were all bummed out because the kenyan man didn't win the race but they were actually kind of excited because bakile had been beaten so at least an Ethiopian hadn't beaten them because Tedesse is Eritrean. And so they sort of dethroned the king and the team won. And I've never seen anything like it. The lion was slain. The lion was slain. And they were at that race, people were passing out left and right. Or, and then after the race, they would take runners and like, there's no stretchers. People would just grab runners that are on the ground, run them and throw them and dump them in a bucket of ice. And it was crazy. And people were saying, I remember medical people were saying, like, yeah, some of these people could die if they weren't thrown into an ice bucket. Yeah, Wel- Weldon thought it was barbaric. I remember Weldon, he's like, yeah, I thought it was the worst medical care ever. Like, they didn't throw them in. He's like, they were throwing them into buckets of ice. And then he found out, he talked to an expert on it, and that's the proper thing to do. And actually, I think in Maryland here, a football player died last summer because they didn't have the ice bucket. So um, they were doing the right thing. But let's talk about the men's race this year. Who is going to be the king? We have the fabulous five, Jeffrey Camor, the two-time champion, looking to join Paul Turgot, John Nagugi, and Kenegisi Bikile is the only man to win three World Cross Country titles. He probably would have already won three if it was an annual affair, but he has to be, you know, he's a defending champion, two-time defending champion. I guess he's the favorite on paper. He's picked by 57% of the Let's Run the combination right now to win it, but there's four other really good challengers. Solomon Borrega, he's run 12.44, right, for 5,000. 43. Joshua Cheptegi, who won the junior race right two years ago from Uganda, has been winning everything so far this year. He and Jacob Caplimo also. Um, Caplimo looked like he had Camor beat last year time. No, no, you, you're mixing them up here, Robert. Caplimo won the junior race in Uganda two years ago, and Cheptegi was the one who looked like he had Camor beat heading into the final lap. Uh, and then the, lo- the last guy we need to mention is Ronex Keprudo of Kenya, who has run 26.46 on the roads. He was only two seconds off the road 10K world record. And he's the world junior champion in the 10,000 meters. Yeah, more impressive than that 26.47. He's even like 27.0 in Central Park. I mean, he destroyed the course record there. And when I break down this race, John, uh, I mean, I guess Cam Moore is the world silver medalist at 10,000. That was in 2015. What happened to Cam Moore? I was thinking about this. At the Olympics in 2016, he didn't medal. In 2017, didn't medal. John, like, was he off his game or? Yeah, I think he had like a he had like a lung problem or a chest problem in 2017. I believe. Sorry, in, in 2016 in the Olympics that um, really limited him. And I just wanted to issue one correction here, Robert. You mentioned uh, there are only three guys to win World Cross three times. It's actually four guys. Carlos Lopez of Portugal did it back in the 70s and 80s. Um, so Kim Moore would be the four, the fifth person to join that club. Yeah, 2017, he just wasn't quite the same on the track, but he's been terrific in the World Half Marathon Championships. I mean, there's a spring championship. You see the World Half Marathon or World Cross, and a lot of the guys will do both of these races. You know, that's the long-distance championship in the spring for the IAF, and they're in alternate years. Camoro has won each one of those in the last five years. He won World, Cro- World Half back here in Copenhagen in 2014, um, and since then... He's gone undefeated in those races with some really impressive performances. I mean, his run in Cardiff was one of the – in the rain, he ran like 59-10. He beat – he smoked Mo Farah. After falling, right? That was one of the most impressive races I've ever seen. After falling down at the start and being trampled and having to work his way back, I mean, that was ridiculous. And then last year, he closed his final 5K in Valencia. Wind aided, admittedly, but he ran his last 5K in 1301 for uh, the World Half Championships. So – I mean, Cam Moore, you look at these other guys and they throw, they've throw thrown up some really impressive performances, but Cam Moore is just a beast. I mean, he's tough as hell. He's succeeded in all surfaces. I mean, he ran 206 in the New York City Marathon last fall. The guy is phenomenal. He's a New York City Marathon champion. I just think, I, I and with all due respect to Chep Guy, to Kip Limo, 
to all these guys. They're very, very talented runners. I mean, Ken Warrow, until this guy's beaten, I just think it's his race to lose. He'd be my pick. Yeah, but he was almost beaten two years ago. I, I know that the Ugandan fa- faded to 30th. And also, you know, and I added this to your preview. John wrote most of it. I added it a little bit. Rornox Caputo, to me, I mean, if Cam Moore wins, to me, it's kind of like uh, I can play Rornox Caputo to like a, 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 a Djokovic or Nadal. Like you think of Federer as the greatest and nothing can surpass him. And then all of a sudden you realize, wait, there's two guys that are just as good as him on his best day, if not better. I would argue that Federer is the most consistent tennis player of all time and one of the all-time greats, but on his best day, he's not as good as Federer or, or, or I mean, he's Nadal as Djokovic. And Caputo, if he had been healthy, I mean, he, he it sounds like he's had a little bit of a hiccup in his training. I mean, he's only 19. This guy could be the next thing. Like, it wouldn't shock me if he won this race. Um, you know, and then how do you discount a 1243 guy? And or it's just there, there's a lot going on. Very exciting. Um, and then, you know, you look at, at Team USA. Someone pointed this out. If you add up the, the top two 10K guys for America, we've never had two 10K guys that fast. I mean, what, what are the 10K PRs, John? It's absurd. 2707 and... Yeah, I mean, Shadrach Kipchichia, he ran 2707 at Worlds in uh, 2017, finished ninth. And then Leonard Coria in that race, he also set his personal best of 2720. And, you know, those are two of the very, very few Americans have run 2720 or faster in 10K. Those guys might be, you know, in the top five or something like that. So to to have those as a one-two punch is very good. And Scott Simmons told me he thinks Shadrach Kipchichia is in the best shape of his life right now. I asked him, you know, if you put him on a track, do you think he could break 27 minutes? And he, he sort of, he leaned towards yes, but he was like, look, this isn't a track race. It's not about time. It's cross country. He's just, he's as fit as he's ever been. That's really all you need to know. So that should be fantastic. And then the women's race, pretty exciting as well. John, I love the way you started the preview. You know, if we told you that the world's best 5,000 meter woman was going to race the world's best steeplechaser woman, wouldn't you be excited about that? And that's exactly what we have. Um, Helen O'Beary, who who is one of the world's and the um, Olympics and, and the 5,000, is making her debut at World Cup. Did not win the Olympics. She was silver in the Olympics. She is the reigning world champion, though, in the 5K. Oh, excuse me. I apologize to Vivian, right? Vivian Chariot, yeah. Um, you know, Helen, it's so refreshing to see her here. I mean, normally people get good and they don't go to World Cross. Like, I've wondered for years now, you know, maybe I should make another offer tonight to pay Kanesi Bikile to go to World Cross. Like, why doesn't he go back to his roots and get the base in? That would be fantastic for him. But normally when they get really good and rich, they don't go to World Cross. But she's doing the opposite. She's making her debut here um, and, and really is the woman to beat because she's been destroying everybody, um, you know, both at the Kenyan trials. And I think she ran one of those IWF cross meets. She's picked by 54% of the people, but let's in that, let, let, uh, send bet G'day of Ethiopia. She doesn't get the fame that she would. And I would say this is a problem with all Ethiopians. Cause honestly, their names are so hard to pronounce in English. I honestly think that Kenyans get more publicity, at least in America. First of all, there's Kenyan papers that are in English. So we can link to the articles in English, but their names are easier, easier for English speakers. Their names are easier to pronounce and they speak better. And they speak English. Speaking English is a big deal. I mean, nothing against the Ethiopians, but it's just easier to get to know someone. I will confess, I did not know that she's won the last two world junior titles. She's also run under 1430 for 5,000. So she's a very, very good runner. She's a little bit inconsistent. Like she hasn't been a big player at Worlds yet or anything like that, but she's still young. But she's the second favorite at 17%. Beatrice Chipkowicz, the world's best steeplechaser, 14%. And then the other people are getting, Stella's just saying 0%, John. I don't know if I've ever seen a 0%. Derrida, 1%. And then other getting 13%. So, John, in the women's race, you think is definitely the woman that's going to win this thing? Yeah, I feel the most confident about it. The men's race, you know, I could see Cam Moore getting beaten. I, I know this seems crazy to say about a guy who has won the last two world cross titles and lost three world half titles that – I'm taking a woman who has never run World Cross before as a lock over her, but as a bigger lock. But you just look at the results she's had. I mean, first of all, she's the Kenyan record holder in the mile, the 3K, and the 5,000. I mean, Kenya has had a lot of good distance runners. So to have those records is really impressive. But then, you know, you look at her cross country races this year January 13th, she runs the Juan Mugeza race in Spain. 
wins that by 20 seconds. She beat Chip Coach by 37 seconds in that race. Chip Coach was in third. She wins the Kenyan Defense Force Championships by 42 seconds, and then she won the, won the Kenyan Trials by 10 seconds on February 23rd, and she was 40 seconds ahead of third place in that race. I mean, she's just been destroying fields, and you would think as long as she handles the course and the hills in Aarhus well, and I think, you know, she has a – she. She's a fairly powerful runner. She runs, you know, her body is pretty twisty up top when she runs. Uh, her hands are pretty into, you know, involved in that motion. So if she can sort of power through that course, I think she's the woman to beat. That's really the only, my only concern would be how she handles the hills, but she's been so good. And her pedigree is that lost two Diamond League championships in the 5K, world champion in the 5K. I mean, I, I think she has to be a winner. I see how, why everybody's picking her and she's definitely the favorite. You're not giving me odds. I'm picking her for sure as well. But I think there's a couple things that give other people a chance. One, it's 10K. I mean, she did run 29.59 on the roads, but she's definitely more 5K, 3K miler. So this is twice as far. And the course is very hard. Wait until we see the course, but running a 10K with like five massive heels, hills, water jumps, mud pits. Yeah, it's going to be more like tent. a 12K it's, or a 13K. Yeah, that's like a 12 or 13K. So that's not in her wheelhouse. It gives other people chances. But one thing that's different, still this case on the women's side versus the men's, is the range of talent is much greater. So the top women are better than everybody else. So there's maybe one, two, or three that can win. You know, on the men's side, we never even mentioned the guy who won the Kenyan Championships, Amos Karui. So it's kind of interesting just that everyone's assuming Kim Warrer, who was fifth, only fifth at the Kenyan Trials this year. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, he'll be ready. He'll be ready to go. John spoke to his agent. I don't think he was really intent on trying to win that race. Like, just. But in the past, he's been that way, and he's got third. This year, he was fifth. So well, true. In the past, when he just qualified for the team, he was third. This year, he's fifth. But you never know what's going to happen. Nobody thought uh, Cheptegich was going to be there last time. And he almost- Cheptegai? That's not That is not true, Weldon. I mean – Chip guy was the world. He had done some stuff on the track. He was the world junior champion in 2014 when it was at Eugene. I mean, I think we knew he was going to be a contender. I don't think I saw him gapping. Gapping. I didn't see field. him gapping Cam Worrell by that much, but I knew he was definitely a guy who could win. Yeah, but you know, if I'm going with the Ugandan this time, it's Kiplimo. So, but for the women. And there are some other interesting women. It's getting a little deeper than it used to be. I mean, world champion, marathon champion, Rose Chalimo in 66, half 11, half marathon at Eunice Chimba, Bahrain. Of course, we don't know if they're in big shape or if they're just sort of showing up to Bahrain. Maybe want that, you know, bronze team medal. It's, it's hard to know with them. Um, Tessa Hagamichu of Ethiopia has run 30, 15 on the road. So, I mean, you know, but Kenya last time went one through six. So uh, I, it seems like the Kenyan men's team is, is loaded and the women. It, the women's team did so well last time. It's hard to see either one of them losing those team battles, but guys, I may have to, to butt out a little bit early. Uh, baby Johnson has woken up on his, on my closed circuit camera. So any last words of wisdom from the hero of the week you need from me? Any, anything you guys need? Yes. A couple of things. One, you're supposed to let the baby cry. I believe, isn't that what you're supposed to do? That's a joke. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We don't have much parenting advice. We said we're going to keep it a bit short anyway. We're about 40 minutes now. We're going to podcast all week. But John and I are going to have a special podcast hour two. We'll be live video from next door. Um, <laughs> Waterloo Strip Club. Closed mo- closed Monday? So it's called Venus Lounge. Oh, Venus Lounge? Maybe it's another strip club. Uh, yeah. There's Jim, a strip club next to our apartment in Copenhagen. It's totally we're nude. Right now. We're in a nice neighborhood. Copenhagen is fascinating. I'm really a beautiful city. We ran around it today. I apologize really nice. for missing the World Half Marathon with championships when they're here. Is that the year Kim Moore fell, you said? Or no, no it, was he, he, it was his first victory, 2014. Any event they ever have in Denmark, I will come to any world championship. I apologize. It's a fascinating city. It's super clean, super nice, you know, but stuff's very interesting. Like, no joke, totally nude strip club, two doors down from our apartment, which is a nice, nice apartment. Yet in our apartment building, people don't lock their bikes. Like, they have bikes completely unlocked so it's a very trusting place yet you know it's just sort of like what people take for granted is like there wouldn't be a strip club in america in this type of neighborhood here like totally good in dc there's some but interesting so let's run plus members it'll be live video from next door for hour two i think i went to copenhagen maybe on the way back from moscow worlds well then if i i need to check my plane to make sure it was the right city 
But my 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 big takeaway, I, I I had like a layover for like ten hours. I went to see some things. I went up to the top of this church. I think, I'm not positive it's coming, but I think it was. Good story. So no, the story is what I remember most is I was amazed. There was a lot of people on bikes. Yeah, this is coming. And I was amazed at how obedient of the traffic laws they were. Like there'd be no cars in the road, and they would wait for the light to turn green before they walked across the street. And I'm like, in New York, in New York, they would have walked. Excuse me, my phone was ringing. I think the baby's calling me, even though he's only 15 months old. Um, in New York, they would like rush people with jaywalk, but there they were very obedient. Have y'all noticed that? Yeah, we've actually been worried about getting caught for jaywalking because they have these massive bike lanes. Like biking's really popular here, and the bike lanes really wide. And so we'll see. Oh, there's no one in the middle, no cars in the middle of the road ready to cross, and then we'll, we'll forget there's these you know bikes just barreling down right for past you and. Yeah, well, and also apparently no one else jaywalks here because me and Weldon have jaywalked like three times already. So I was right. I have been there. All right, guys. I was right. All right. Don't pat your back. Don't sprain your wrist patting yourself on the back about the Kelsey Bruce thing too much, Robert, but good to hear from you. Good to see you guys. Talk to you soon. Robert, the hero this week on Lettron.com. Robert gets a lot of shit on the website because he – I'm not sure. He's a little bit more outspoken. Some accuse him of being a troll, but Robert's not afraid to stir it up, but he was dead on on this Kelsey Bruce thing. So, John, should we – any more sort of parting quick thoughts on either the men's or women's race? Uh, no, I not really. What I want to move on – I want to move on to Europe real quick about the European representation at World Cross because, frankly, it's embarrassing. We talked about this in our – you know, in our men's preview, there's only three men's teams competing. It's full men's teams in the men's senior race. It's uh, Denmark, Spain, and Great Britain. I just think that's a disgrace. I mean, this is one of the best. It seems like it's going to be one of the best world crosses in recent memory. It's in it's in Copenhagen. It's easy to get to from anywhere in Europe. Aarhus. Sorry, Aarhus. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, we're in Copenhagen right now. But it's in Aarhus. It's not hard to get to from anywhere in Europe. Why, why are these countries sending teams? I mean, Turkey Turkey essentially imports Kenyans to dominate everyone at the European cross-country championships. They are sending one man. They're not even sending a team to the world cross-country because they think, well, Kenya and Ethiopia, you know, the, Uganda, they're going to take the medals. They're not going to be any for me. I mean, that to me is just a total joke. Okay, this concept that you only show up if you can win is terrible. It's not good for the sport. And it's good to hear Jacob and others saying, we want people competing. We need people competing. We need more teams. We need more countries sending teams. And the IWF with its new ranking system is trying to promote competition, which is a great thing. And, you know, there's been some quibbling over some of the details of the ranking system. But overall, yes, we need people to compete. But how about this idea? What if the IWF just started penalizing countries that don't send full teams to World Cross Country? You know, if you're in Europe, you send a team, you know. If With a certain yeah, size. I mean, I'm not right. expecting Malta to spe- send like six guys out here, but Germany, Germany's not sending any guys to run this right. race. Poland can't. These are big athletics loving nations. So they're not sending people to run the world cross. It's, it's ridiculous. Right. So if you don't send a team to world cross country, we'll take away one spot from your team at track mm-hmm. or somehow start penalizing people who don't come like on the federation level, start having incentives and penalties or, I don't know, maybe tie some of the payments to, that these countries get to the IWF into, you didn't send a team to World Cross Country, sorry. You're not getting your payment this year. I don't know. And you could have different tiers. I'm sure, oh, people would say it's unfair, but it's embarrassing. We need we need people competing. Like the sport, and I think Kelsey Bruce shows this. She has an opportunity to come here. She's gung-ho. People are gung-ho about it. I think it's really cool. It's like the dream. You get to go to the World Cross Country Championships. And I thought, oh, anyone can sign up. But it's really cool that – they're letting this opportunity and people are like her taking advantage of it. And I really hope she does great, but. Well, you just worry because world cross used to be an annual affair used to be every year. Now they've cut it back since 2011. It's been every other year. They've cut back the 5,000 from the diamond league. You know, the 10,000 is barely run globally anymore. You want people talk about will, will, will cross country get in the Olympics one day, summer or winter Olympics. I mean, I'm looking here at the event and the turnout from some of the countries. I know that USA supports it. I know that the African nations support it. But, I mean, it's it's not exactly thriving here. And I think if we want to keep this event, especially when it's going to be in Bathurst, Australia in 2021, not an easy place to get to. If you want people showing up to this that 
event, you need the federations to support it. You need to say, look, even if we're not just getting a medal, if we all go and we invest in this and raise the overall quality of the event and show that everyone is involved in it and this is something everyone cares about, it, it raises the value of the event. More people are going to care about it. More people are going to be interested in it. I mean, look at the U European championships as well. People, people in Europe care about that meet and it's, it's pretty popular meet. Speaking of cross country, possibly being an Olympic sport, John, breaking news. Break dancing. Emphasis on breaking. <laughs> yes, breaking news. Break dancing being recommended by the IOC for inclusion in the 2024 Olympics in Paris. Wow. So uh, I'll tell you, if I, if I have one of those all pass, all sports credentials for uh, Paris, uh, I'm not going to be going to the break dancing. Well, then. I mean, give me basketball. Will watch it, though, you know? I thought it was terrible at first. It's not a sport, it. though, but people will watch it. Gymnastics in there, break dancing. Oh, That's man. actually not true. I probably will, I will definitely see highlights of it on Twitter for sure. Michael Jackson could have been a gold medalist, and now with all the Michael Jackson stuff, um, yeah, let's another... steer out of that one. Uh, so, oh, one other guy I did want you know. Speaking of Europeans, though, yep. one guy I'm yes. very excited that is I'm running this. Jacob Ingebrigtsen. He has declared that he is running the junior race, and he's not running for second place. He's coming up. He's trying to win. Uh, I think this is awesome. No non-African born man has medaled in the junior race at World Cross Country since Dathan Ritzenhain of the United States did it back in 2001. No one from outside of Africa has won since Per Casacubeta of Spain in 1984 when those championships were held in uh, the Meadowlands in New Jersey, by the way, in the United States. And I guess I haven't looked through all the fields. I know that Kenya has... Um, it's some some young good young talent as usual. Ronald Quemoy's brother is running the race. Uh, blanking on his name at the moment, but he's I've been told he's a he's definitely a guy to watch for. Um, it's Jacob for the last name, John. What well, his last name's not Quemoy. Oh, okay, that's okay, the problem. Okay. But yeah, Damn Kenyan name. I'm Jake. I can look at a little bit more details up on this guy. But what do you think about Jacob? He, he you know, he had a great indoor season. He beat Samuel Tafera, the world record holder, at fifteen hundred meters. He beat him in the fifteen. He came very close to winning the fifteen and the three k European indoors. Now he's running well cross. I mean, it's basically the patron saint of, of run, run, running. It let's run. He's running all the big events. I love it. He's racing in all these events as a seventeen year old. He was European, not junior champion, senior champion at fifteen hundred and five k. Both pretty convincingly. This shows how tough cross country is because he's not running the senior race here. He's trying to win the junior race, but he's not a 10K runner. It's great to see him taking on the best and competing. And this is what we need. Europeans not afraid to like go there. And if you lose, who cares? Like if you win, great. So and it's in Scandinavia. I mean, it's just good. He's the only Norwegian athlete who's running this meet, which is kind of a shame considering Norway is not very far away from Denmark, but... I think it's cool, and he sort of reset the bar, I think, of what Western runners think they can accomplish at a young age. Before, I think it was an easy cop-out to say, oh, well, these Kenyans or Ethiopian guys may not be of age. They may be a couple years older. You can't run that fast that young. And there's no doubting Jacob's age or his greatness, and he's just what the sport needs. His brothers also this week have been on social media promoting the Oslo Dream Mile. Maybe it's promoting the Bizlet games Bizzle in games, yeah, I think so. So hopefully they have a good mile this year, but they're sort of wearing retro-looking stuff and photos. And I think Oslo can really, with the Ingebrigtsen, can really establish itself. They've been so great, but it hasn't really been a big focus. Jacob's sort of been new on the scene, but I think with them, all, if they all focus on that meet and then... And Karsten Wolholm, too, who's a big right. character, the world champion of the 400 hurdles. You know. So we have four sort of Norwegian stars. And then if we get one of these other guys, Manangoy or somebody, Chariot, to really go after the mile. The mile record has been so soft for a while. Not the world record, but nobody's really run it faster than Alan Webb since Alan Webb's American record, which is crazy because these guys are running under 330 all the time. So I'd like to see a very fast mile this year. Yeah, I mean, if Kajelcha can run 347.01 indoors, you'd have to think that, you know, you get Tim Chariot or Elijah Manangoy or, you know, if Ron Quemoy is healthy, these guys – you know, someone can pop a 345 or something like that. And speaking of Quemoy, so his brother, his name is Samuel Chebele, and he won the Kenyan trials. I think he is going to be, he won it by eight seconds. He's going to be pretty 
tough to beat. I've heard good things about him. And then Leonard Bett is another guy to watch. He's uh, an 8-16 steeplechaser. He ran some steeples on the circuit last year. He's eighth in the Diamond League final, fourth at the Birmingham Diamond League, and second at World Juniors in the steeple. So those are some of the guys he's going to have to beat. I'll admit my knowledge on the junior races isn't as in-depth as the, the senior fields, but I think it's just going to be really exciting to see what Jacob can do against these guys, who prevails. That that just adds another layer of intrigue to what should be a terrific race. Ethiopia and Kenya, they're very strong, very fast runners. John, just talking generalities about Yeah, that. let's hear Mike Francesa on this. Oh, yeah, I really like the, uh, you know, the kick. Yeah, kick's always important there. And teams, good team speed for both of these teams. Yes, and it's important to get your sleep the night before and just be really prepared mentally. Yeah, ready for any any sort of the conditions they can yes. throw at you. you got to be mentally prepared. Well done, i got to tell you. Yeah, there's nothing more important than that. Preparation is key to, to success. Well, speaking of preparation – is it 11 o'clock here or 12 o'clock? Almost midnight. 10.54 p.m. All right, good. Well, we're kind of both going on fumes, and we're going to have a daily podcast or at least one tomorrow, but LRC Nation will get to meet – we will get to meet Kelsey Bruce for the first time tomorrow. <laughs> That's right. We've been receiving even more emails today as the podcast has been going on. Someone's upset. They have not seen Kelsey Bruce on the official start list. They want to make sure she's in the race. We've been assured. We've – this is sort of interesting. We did have to get permission. The IWF gets to approve or deny anyone who tries to enter the senior race. And she has been, her admission has been accepted. Her entry, excuse me, has been accepted. So we'll have Kelsey Bruce tomorrow and we'll put this up. So I guess by the time you guys hear this in America, this will be on, what is today, John? This will be so Thursday. We're finishing up Wednesday, the 27th. They'll, they'll, this will publish on Thursday the 28th. Oh, what if we publish another one Thursday? Two podcasts in one day. Plus subscribers, you'll get hour two from us live video next door. <laughs> We're raising the price for that that one. The VIP plus subscribers will get that one, actually. Anyway, John, I'm excited to be in Denmark. I hope you are, too. This has been fun, and we will have much more from Copenhagen. We'll have video course previews, and I guess we'll be coaching Kelsey out there. Have to. You know, maybe we can post on Let's Run. Like, how should you navigate this water crossing, this sand pit? This what should crazy we yell? Hill? What motivational slogans should we yell at her? Keep yeah. going, push beyond the limit. You're all out now. Fight on. Any Fight suggestions? On. Let me know. That's the There's a thread on Let's Run. We'll post that in the show notes. Essentially, we've got to fill out our coaching staff. We need some hangers on to come out here. It was sort of a joke. You know, we're just sort of making fun of stuff, but. We are looking for ideas that people think would be helpful for this course because I honestly think with this course, I mean, let's say you can navigate certain something a little better, four seconds a lap. That's 20 seconds, right? That's a huge difference. Yeah. So, yes, it's how fit you are, but also like how tough are you? Can you keep going? Do you get watered down? Water down. Do you get logged down in the water, the sand pit? Does the beer tent throw you off? Does the hill throw you off? Don't stop for a beer. That's my advice. Wait until the race is over. Right, but someone lets from at winter just to have a beer on the last lap. You know, try to go. Plenty of time for beers after the race. Well, all right. Until tomorrow, you guys in America might hear this, hear us again in the same twenty-four hour period. But Weldon Johnson signing off for Jonathan Galt. Bye, guys.